Hello, I'm Ed and welcome back to another episode of Bilk. In today's episode, we're testing the endurance capabilities of my Ginetta G56 GTA Sprint race car at a charity event that we hosted earlier on last year at Donington Park. I've owned my Ginetta G56 for around about a year now, and it's always been great fun to drive. The Ginetta GT Academy season so far has been full of highs and lows, but whatever the outcome of each race has been, I always come away with the same feeling. I wish it could have gone on longer. Each GTA race lasts around 20 minutes, which equates to 16 or so laps depending on the circuit. This is the sweet spot for a car like a G56, as it's designed as a sprinter and not for endurance racing. But over the course of the season, that got me thinking, how far could you push the G56? And how would this sprint car cope with being pushed to the max over hours rather than minutes? So I decided to find out. However, the idea of booking a track session and just driving round and around all day sounded like a bit of a waste. I needed to find a way to make the most of this little experiment. As much as I'd love to be a full-time racing driver, I have to fit racing in around my day job, running the Acres Group of Companies. As an organization that designs, constructs, and develops residential properties, we have supported the Framework charity for a number of years. With this in mind, we hit upon the idea of turning this track day into a charity passenger ride day, which could raise funds for Framework by auctioning passenger laps with me, a qualified racing driver. We booked a place at Donington Park and set out promoting the charity event. Despite a fantastic publicity campaign, uptake was slow and we had only managed to sell a handful of places. Add to that the number of last minute cancellations, and I was worried if anyone was going to turn up at all. <laughs> to everyone's relief, and in contrast to my gloomy prediction, it looked like the word had gotten around, and we ended up with even more attendees than we'd hoped for. What we're doing today is something called Racing for Homes. We're really grateful to everyone that's donated any amount of money. It's, it's a super fantastic cause. We're really pleased to be out here. I'm so grateful that the weather is amazing. Um, we're looking forward to lots of fun on track. However, this posed a bit of a problem. With the amount of places that we'd sold, it became apparent that from 9 a.m. through to 5 p.m. when the track closed, I would need to take almost 50 different passengers out on track. When planning the event, we concluded that seven laps per person would be manageable. One out lap, five fast laps, and a final cool down lap as we brought the car back into the pits. But given the number of people hoping to get out on track, this was now going to be a big ask. To fulfill the promise of seven laps, I was going to have to achieve an average lap time of two minutes throughout the entire day. So those flying laps were going to need to almost be pole position times to ensure that we could get through everyone. I just hoped that a bit of leeway that we'd allowed for red flags, refueling, and getting passengers strapped in and out of the car would be enough. At that pace, the G56 would be running for pretty much the entire day. I could only hope that this sprint car had the capability to stay the distance. First order of the day was to give the car a shakedown to make sure that everything was working correctly in anticipation of this marathon track day. With this done, it was time to start the clock. And first person into the passenger seat also turned out to be my biggest fan. I'm about to go in the car with Ed. Um, it's my first time. I think it's really nice that people get that exposure to come and be able to see the race car which they wouldn't normally do become a passenger which actually is very very rare and also while supporting such a good cause. Rachel had been my rock throughout the GTA season so far. 
She'd been at all race weekends, as well as being incredibly understanding when I'd been away on numerous testing days. Being a racing driver at any level makes considerable demands on your time. So it was great to be able to give a little something back and take her for her first spin in the G56. Next out was a young framework service user called Jack, who had been supported by the charity over a number of years. It was great to meet him, and I learned firsthand how he benefited from the great work that the charity does. The morning continued, with more and more passengers taking their turn to jump in the car. However, despite only being a fraction of the way through the day, it was becoming evident that the unrelenting pace, coupled with the increasing daytime temperatures, were already having an adverse effect on the car. Right, so a quarter of the way through the morning, I am absolutely dripping in sweat. This is going to be almost a 30 degree day today. It is really baking out there. Tire temperatures are up, pressures are up. The car is squirreling underfoot, it is wobbly, uh, but it's still enjoyable. Manageable, manageable, but we have got quite a few other cars on track that are much slower than we are. Absolutely incredible. Get on right. Feel all right, yeah? yeah. Feel good. I'm sweating though, Jesus. Yeah, it's hot, hot, hot today. Mm. It's definitely a bit squirrely. Unlike many race cars, which run on slicks, the G56 runs on Michelin R20 Pilot Sport 4S road tires. As the Ginetta GT Academy is an entry-level series, this was a conscious decision by Ginetta to help keep costs down. The average price for a set of these tires was 880 pounds, as opposed to what could run into the thousands for a comparable sized set of slicks. Slick tires work best once they've been warmed up which is why racing drivers weave aggressively on their green flag lap, as this helps generate additional heat, stickiness, and therefore, grip. Are you, are you getting nervous yet? No, I'm getting more and more excited. I'm looking forward to it. The morning continued, with more and more passengers taking their turn to jump in the car. the pace and the heat were unrelenting, and the aircon just seemed to be blowing hot air around the cabin. As well as the tires, the gearbox was now starting to overheat. It was increasingly a struggle to manage these issues, as well as the volume of passengers and my own level of exhaustion. At this rate, it really was 50-50 which would conk out first, me or the car. As I took this much needed break to re-energize, there were even more people signing up on the day. And I was determined to raise as much money for framework as I could. My dad signed me up because I wanted to do it for my birthday. And now I'm back to school. <laughs>
good, so fast. I kept saying which bits I liked, and I swear it was going fast around them bits. It was so much fun. In terms of adrenaline rush, it was great, great fun. Amazing. Never done anything like that before, and uh, yeah, I feel like I've just been uh, beaten up by a few people in a car. So we're midway through sort of early sessions in the afternoon. Um, the track is hot. I am hot. The car is hot. Everything is baking. We're like 30 degrees out here. Despite the conditions, I was determined to push on. The turnout in support of Framework was amazing to see. And even though we still had lots more people to get through, I was quietly confident we would be able to get through everyone so long as we avoided any costly delays. Okay, so we're coming again, another red flag unfortunately, we've got about two hours left to get it done. It's going to be a tall order, but I'm pretty sure we can make it happen as long as we're doing any more red flags. So, super excited to get back in the car, I am sweating to absolute death and I am absolutely exhausted. But I'm persevering, <laughs> so I want to make sure we get it all done. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a tough one to make sure we get them all done in time. Because the track does close at five, we don't control it, it just closes and we cannot go out again. Sure enough, the green flags came out and we were back on track. I was really going to have to push hard to make up for lost time. But just as the end of the day was in sight, it was then that something finally broke. But despite what we'd put it through, it wasn't the car. I'll have to throw in the towel, because I am I'm dead. <laughs> I'm absolutely dead. I need a breather. I need to just get out of the car and, and take five minutes, because honestly, this is the hottest I has ever been when I've been in the car. I've never experienced it this hot in the day when we've been out on track in anywhere. So yeah, it's in the cars, it is absolutely insane. So we've been going since nine o'clock this morning. It's now 4 p.m. Um, pretty non-stop. We had a few breaks and a few red flags, but it has been pretty hectic. Um, so yeah, it's been a long day, a long day. And I'll take a breather for 20 minutes and then we'll see how we do. I attempted to rehydrate and summon up the energy from somewhere to get back in the car but it was evident that my day was done. So that was it, we'd come so close, but our hopes of getting everyone who had donated out on track were over. The thought of having to tell all the remaining excited donors that they'd come all this way for nothing was incredibly disappointing. It would have been great to have a qualified racing driver just milling around the pits, who'd be happy to lend a hand and save the day. And as it turns out, there was. It transpired that having heard about our little experiment and the charity event, my day one coach, Max Coates, had come along to lend his support. Seeing the state I was in, he was only too happy to take the last few passengers out and probably gave them more of a thrill ride than they'd originally bargained for. It's always good to come along and support worthwhile causes. I, I think Frameworks are really, really brilliant charity and, and should you know, have a lot more support than they get. So it's nice to uh, at least bust on the back and uh, yeah, do my little bit to, to help that cause. So. so there we have it. It turns out that despite being a sprint car, the weakest link in the G56's armour, when it comes to endurance racing, is actually 
The fat wobbly lump of meat sat in the driver's seat. It's pretty amazing that given what we put the car through, we only experienced a few niggles, namely an overheating gearbox and tires, both of which are understandable given the uncharacteristic 30 degree heat of a British summer day, despite being thrashed for more or less seven hours straight. The track day had beaten me before it had beaten the car. The fact that the G56 GTA, a car designed for 20 minute races, can take on a full endurance spec run and succeed is testament to the engineering, knowledge and dedication of this relatively modest manufacturer based in a little town just outside Leeds, Janetta. So, there we have it, the Ginetta G56 GTA. I cannot believe that a car designed to go sprint racing for 20 minutes at a time was able to last seven and a half, almost eight hours all day long on track. Testament to the amazing work that goes on at the incredible facility that Ginetta have up in Garforth and Leeds. I really hope that you've enjoyed that video. If you have, please do make sure you give us a like and a big thumbs up. It really helps us with the YouTube algorithm. And also, it lets us know that we're producing content that you're enjoying. Please do let us know in the comments below about more tests that you'd like to see from us on the Ginetta G56. What other things do you want to know about the capabilities of that car? We'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you'll be notified when new videos are released on a regular basis. So from me and all the team at Bill, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.